Well, that may be the greatest draft class I've ever seen by the Eagles. No, 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 no. Legitimately, the Eagles not being biased, the Eagles are my pick to win the Super Bowl this year. Howie Roseman, I mean, like, Howie Roseman deserves this thing. He is a absolute freaking god. But let's get into something else before we get into the video. The Sixers are absolutely screwed. I mean, we're down 3-1 the series. We lost the game at home. Now the next game is in New York. Like, it's just not looking good for them at all. I was telling everyone, like, we're not going to win the playoffs this year. Like, what has changed since last year besides Harden? But enough with the smushy stuff. Quick disclaimer before we get started. If you disagree, please leave a comment below, um, you know... Letting me know what you agree, disagree with, and without further ado, let's get into grading each team's first round uh, draft pick. Alright, here we are at NFL.com, and uh, the Bears picked Caleb Williams. I mean, I don't really have a specific grade for this, because like... It was just too obvious. I mean, like, we all knew they, they were going to go with Caleb Williams. I mean, like, they did what they needed to do. They needed a quarterback, and so what did they do? They went and got the best guy who was on the board, and, I mean, like, the Bears are going to be a lot better this year with Caleb Williams. Moving on, we got Jaden Daniels being drafted by the Washington Commanders. Again, like, I don't really have a specific grade for this because, like, it was just too obvious. I mean, like, say with Drake May. I mean, like, you knew these guys were banged up. They didn't have a quarterback, so what did they do? They go and they get a quarterback, which is really, like, is really going to help them out a lot. Moving on, we have Marvin Harrison Jr. being drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. I give this, honestly, I give this one an A. Look, they lost Hollywood Brown. I get that. And, I mean, kudos to the Cardinals. Because, like, they really did what they needed to do. Like, Hollywood Brown was probably their only hope of ever getting even close to the playoffs. So, I mean, they got the next best thing. The best available wide receiver in the draft. And that that is really going to help them out a lot. I'm telling you guys. Alright, moving on. We have Joe Alt being drafted by the Los Angeles Chargers. Wow. It's like, who is Herbert going to throw the ball to now? Like, Quentin Dropston? No. I mean, Joe Ald's a great offensive lineman. Don't get me that. Don't get me wrong. But, like, who are his receivers now? What is it? John, whatever his name, Josh Palmer? Quentin Johnson? Like, and who is their tight end? Gerald Everett? Like, no. I mean, you got a good running back duo. I mean, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, maybe that could be helpful. I mean, losing Austin Eckler is going to hurt a lot. But, like, like who, are his, who are his receivers? You have to have a receiver in order to be successful. And right now, the Chargers have no one. And that was absolutely criminal. All right, moving on, we have Malik Neighbors being drafted by the New York Giants. This one gets an A. Oh, I also forgot to uh, give the uh, Los Angeles Chargers their grade. They get a C-. minus. Like, that was an absolute stupid pick. But yeah, Malik Neighbors from the Giants, that gets an A. Like, Darius Slayton is not going to be their number one guy for too much longer now. Now, they finally have a receiver who can catch the ball. And the Giants will be a lot better. Now, they're finally starting to... Uh, treat Daniel Jones like the guy they paid him a year ago. I mean, I do feel like they could have gotten a better running back. I mean, Devin Singletary, sure, but like, yeah, I mean, he's not a necessarily a number one guy. He's just like a, a good second string guy. But honestly, it was kind of a tough choice to decide who the Giants needed more, a wide receiver or a running back. And uh, they picked a wide receiver, and that was really helpful for Daniel Jones. All right, moving on, we have J.C. Latham being drafted by the Tennessee Titans. This one gets a B plus. Look, it was a great pick. I just really think they fumbled a bag here. And it was to, like, get a new quarterback. I mean, like, they, like I said in my last video, they're real, they were really starting to figure out that Will Levis was not the guy. Like, they really wasted a draft pick last year. So you might as well just fresh start, uh, just draft another quarterback. Or at least, 
uh, help get like Dallas Turner or like get a defense guy or whatever. But all of that, don't get me wrong, J.C. Latham is a great offensive lineman, and I think he will really help by protecting Will Levis. I just really, really think they could have had it better than Will Levis, though. Moving on, we have the Atlanta Falcons drafting Michael Penix Jr., another quarterback, after they literally just paid a quarterback this offseason. This one, honestly, I don't care if this is harsh. This one gets an F. And it's funny enough that, like, these two are going to be free agents at the exact same time. So, like, if Michael Penix, like, gets any playtime, he's going to be, like, what? It is, like, late 20s? Like, that was by far the stupidest move I've ever seen the Atlanta Falcons do. And I am sure that the Atlanta Falcons fans over there are pissed right now. I am dead serious, man. What a stupid idea. All right, moving on. We have the Bears drafting Romo Dunze. And honestly, I give this one an A-. Listen, like, they really could have drafted, like, defense here, but... Hey, I mean, adding just another weapon to the da already dangerous offense that they had with uh, Keenan Allen, uh, DeAndre Swift, uh, Caleb Williams, DJ Moore, and just an okay offensive line, I guess. But just adding another weapon is really only going to make this Bears offense even stronger and more powerful, and the Bears have drafted the best out of the NFC North, no question about that. Alright, moving on, we have J.J. McCarthy being drafted by the Minnesota Vikings, and this one gets an A. Look, again, like the first three uh, picks, they did what they needed to do. Like, did, all Vikings fans, did you really think that they were going to settle for Sam Darnold? No. Hell no. I mean, hey, if they get it right, J.J. McCarthy could be, like, the next generational talent for Minnesota, and now... Justin Jefferson finally, finally has someone that can actually get him the ball. But moving on, we have Olamua Fashanu, I think. Offensive tackle for the for the New York Jets now. And hey, I mean, I thought they were gonna draft a uh, offensive tackle. I just didn't know who it was. I mean, I predicted that it was gonna be Joe Alt, but not this guy. But either way, it gets an A. Listen, you you just drafted a guy that's gonna help out this the, by far the weakest offensive line I have ever seen. And, and like again, like they did what they needed to do, and that's why they get an A. Now the Jets have someone who will guarantee that Aaron Rodgers will not get her at the fourth play of the game. I'm not even kidding you, bro. All right, next we have Bo Nix being drafted by the Denver Broncos, and this also gets an A. I cannot say it enough. The Broncos, they knew they had to get a quarterback, so they just drafted the top one on the board. And now, and at the time, it was Bo Nix. I mean, he's not like the youngest quarterback in the draft. I mean, he's like 25. But it was still a darn good pick. I mean, the Denver Broncos, like, Jarrett... What's his name? Jarrett Stidham, I think is his last name. No, no way. They are not going to settle for that guy. Uh, neither were they going to for Zach Wilson. I mean, Zach Wilson's like terrible. The biggest bust I've ever seen of a draft pick from the Jets. But hey, I mean, again, they did what they needed to do. And like any team that does that gets an A. At least they were not the Falcons. But moving on, we have the Las Vegas Raiders uh, drafting Brock Bowers, and this one, this one gets a B minus. I mean, they wasted a pick two years in a row on a tight end that they did not need, and it's like, okay, fine, I I guess. But the Bra the Raiders really could have used Michael Penix Jr. It's like, I mean, yeah, I mean, you got Devontae Adams with, and Jacoby Myers, but, like, who's throwing the ball? And, like, Brock Bowers, he's a tight end, but you can't have him be useful when you have nobody throwing him the ball. Who is it now? Aiden O'Connell? Like, no. All right, moving on, we have Tylese Buaga being drafted by the New Orleans Saints. Honestly, this one gets an A-. minus. 
again, like, their offensive line was very, very, very weak right now. I mean, they're, it's still weak until this guy showed up. I mean, they needed an offensive tackle. And so, what did they do? They went and got one. Honestly, that's the best move that Dennis Allen's made since he started taking over the New Orleans Saints. But now, you finally, finally have someone to protect Derek Carr and someone to really give him a chance to prove that he's not a total bust after all. After all, because Derek Carr has still got it, in my opinion. All right, next up we have Liatu Latu from, well, now from the Indianapolis Colts, uh, an edge rusher. Uh, this one gets an A. Listen, they're, each year, each draft, they're really just, you know, trying to add to that already strong defensive line, and honestly, they, again, they did what they, the Colts did what they needed to do, and because of this guy, they're gonna make him and DeForest Bunker look absolutely unstoppable. Alright, moving on, uh, we have Byron Murphy being drafted by the Seattle Seahawks. This one gets an A2. I mean, they missed out on Jalen Carter, thanks to us. So, um, you know, they really got a replacement for him. And honestly, he's really going to have uh, this very sad Seahawks defense, in my opinion. Moving on, we have Dallas Turner being drafted by the Minnesota Vikings. This one gets an A+. Listen, this guy is going to make Minnesota fans forget that Daniil Hunter ever left. He's legitimately the next Daniel Hunter, and, like, you know, he could become, in my opinion, he's my favorite to win uh, the Defensive Rookie of the Year. Next up, we have Amarius Mims. I had the Eagles getting this guy, but we had Amarius Mims uh, being drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals. This one gets an A. Listen, like, Joe Burrow's been sacked at least 40 times a year since he was drafted. I mean, like, there, no one good is protecting him. Uh, but, you know, the Bengals finally made a right move in the draft. They got a Marius Mims. They finally got someone to protect Joe Burrow. And so now I think Joe Burrow, like, with the amount of skill he has as a quarterback, I think he's at least going to get sacked, like, I mean, at the very most, like, 30 times this year. Like, I'm not even kidding you. Next up, we have Jared Verse. Being drafted by the Los Angeles Rams. This one gets an A. The Rams knew that they were hurting since Aaron Donald retired. So they went and go got themselves a nice little edge rusher. And he's going to be very, very, very good. I'm telling you. Next up, we have Troy Fuatanu from uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers now. Offensive tackle. This one also, like, I give this one a B plus. I mean... Uh, the Steelers at the time had a very weak offensive line until they got this guy. And now they finally have someone that's going to protect Justin Fields from getting sacked. Like Joe Burrow, from getting sacked at least 52 times a season. Next up, we have Chop Robinson being drafted by the Miami Dolphins. This one gets a uh, B minus. I mean, I don't really, I don't really think they need Chop Robinson. I mean, they already had Bradley Chubb who recorded 11 sacks yesterday. Um, so, like, they didn't really need him all that much, but, uh, you know, I mean, hey, the Dolphins should be happy that they still got him, I mean, like, they're just adding to it, I mean, Chop Robinson and Bradley Chubb, um, both sides of the defensive end is gonna be absolutely unstoppable. Moving on, we have Quinion Mitchell being drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles, this one gets an A+. Plus. I'm telling you, Howie Roseman is an absolute god. You know, he, I mean, he addressed the weakest positions that we have had. He addressed the uh, corner uh, position. So what did they, what did he do? He went and got the two best on the board. Like, that was insane. You know, I mean, you also got Jeremiah Trotter. Uh, you got a nice, fast running back, a nice, fast wide receiver. You get a couple uh, O-linemen. Like, this whole draft by the Eagles gets an A+. But, guys, that is going to do it for my NFL draft uh, reactions. Um, you know, again, this could be the greatest draft class I've ever seen from the Philadelphia Eagles. They did not disappoint one bit. I mean, like, they got, uh, they got every position that they needed. Linebacker, um, corner, safety, oh, by the way, safety, uh, from CJ Gardner-Johnson, uh, and Cooper DeGene, like, those, 
Those two are going to be, we may have the best secondary in the entire league. I'm not even kidding. But for real, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure to leave a like on this video and make sure to subscribe. We're on the road to 200 subscribers. Again, once you finish one story, a new one begins. We hit 100, now we're on the road to 200. But please make sure to do so, so uh, you can get some more content. Uh, Thursday, like I said, I posted a community poll, or not poll, a community post saying uh, how I was going to, you know, uh, what's it, um, do another NFL division predictions. Now that the free agency and the draft are over, we can finally get into what I actually think will happen now that the uh, rosters are done. But make sure to stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys the next time I upload.